So I'm a huge fan of Shane Black's. Yeah. I like his writing style. I like the. I think there are not a lot of writers who are better at um, creating this sort of interesting dialogue. Yeah. Like. Um, well, the nice. I mean, there's this. Uh, the one problem that I have with Shane Black, I was going to mention the nice guys, but then this thought occurred to me that um, he does have a tendency of sort of not being overtly creative in the sense that he is kind of always repeating himself. In a sense, his his dialogue is always within this sort of a box yeah. of this sort of edgy funniness. But it does work to an extent. Yeah. Like, um, well, I think Lethal Weapon is really, it's a remarkably good movie in a way. Oops. You haven't met anybody you didn't kill? Well, I haven't killed you yet. Well... Well, don't do me no favors. And I think um, it's sort of hard to appreciate how good it is from today's perspective. Because back in the day, I think it was really sort of like, a, it basically created a genre of movies, which is the sort of like a buddy cop uh, comedic action genre of movies. And it's it's... I think he's great, yeah, in that sense. But he does have the problem that he is not su such a versatile writer. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I had this kind of a revelation about Shane Black because I also had this idea that when the Predator was in the de developmental stages, um, I was also excited about mm. this being a Shane Black film, and then I then now after I saw the movie and I was so disappointed mm. with it, I started to think about Shane Black, mm. and um, I think that a lot of I I agree. I mean, I loved I loved um, Little Weapon when mm. I was a kid. I think I I thought that it was a, it was a really really well constructed movie. Like you said, the first really buddy cop mm. movie. But now that I think about it, if those guys, if like Riggs and Murto were mm. played by like lesser uh, actors, Holbrook and yeah. Key, I don't think it would have worked. I think that a lot of the stuff no, why yeah. Lethal Weapon is so good is Mel Gibson. Mm. And also playing off of him, yeah, Danny being Glover. Being the straight guy, sort of. Yeah. I think that that dynamic, uh, and I think that, that that happened also in um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Mm. I thought that Downey and Kilmer just had that thing going mm. for them, that they were good at, at speaking Shane Black's lines. Yeah. But even with Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, because I, I started to think about this. This is the this is the thing that Shane Black does. He mm. has a he has two people mm. in the center. This happens with uh, this happens with uh, happened with the Lethal Weapon uh, movies. This happened with the Last Boy Scout. Yeah. This happens with to yeah. an extent. It happens with Last Action Hero, but. There, the other guy's a kid, mm. and it doesn't work as well. Mm. It happens with the nice guys, no. and and now that I think about it, I don't really think that Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is mm. as good as a movie as it as people think it mm. is. I don't think that the nice guys is as good mm. a movie as I think uh, a lot of people think about it. The Last Action Hero has. Basically, it has a fun idea in the center, mm. and then the execution is a bit iffy. Um, so in the end, I'm not that impressed by mm. Shane Black. I think that he has a good way of uh, of subverting the audience's expectations. Mm. Like in in 
in a Shane Black movie, if two guys, I think this, this was an example in the Empire, in, in Empire, if in, in a Shane Black movie, two guys start playing Russian roulette, mm. it's usually the first round that ends it. Mm. Yeah. You know, you, you just, Here they build up the suspense and then the bang. Guy. What That's that. did yeah. you just do? I just, I put in one bullet, didn't I? I you put, put a one. live round in that gun. Oh, yeah, there was like an 8% chance. Eight percent? Was it just 8? 8? Yeah. Who taught you math? And it's funny because it's a trope mm. and we're, we're, because we're, we've seen Hollywood movies so many times, we're expecting it to be a drawn out mm. thing. And then he sort of undercuts it by killing one of the characters yeah. off right away. Um, oh, and then there's Long Kiss Goodnight as well, which, for which Shane Black was paid like millions and millions mm. of dollars. And I don't, I don't like Long Kiss Goodnight either. I mean, sorry to, to shit on a Finnish director, but mm. I, I don't think that it's a very good movie. I think that he's, uh, he's a product of a lot of pulpy movies, a lot mm. of pulpy uh, 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 books. But the problem is that if you compare him to like an early Tarantino, mm. he can't execute it in a way which is... He, it's it's only it feels that like it's only surface mm. that he can create these scripts where people talk weirdly and mm. are kind of funny but there's nothing behind that veneer nothing behind that surface mm. like with tarantino there's actually things going on beneath and mm. you can you can dissect that stuff and you no. can dissect the scripts and they're much i think that they're much more intelligent in, mm. in a way i mean tarantino has obviously become a sort of a caricature of himself as well but even I feel that Tarantino has more talent in his little finger mm. than Shane Black has in any of his scripts. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I appreciate that he's doing these kinds of things and he, he, he's able to pull off like um, movies that are completely watchable, mm. entirely watchable. Uh, I think I, I wouldn't have a problem watching The Nice Guys mm. again. I wouldn't have a problem watching Kiss Kiss Bang Bang again. I never have a problem watching a Lethal Weapon again. Mm. But but I don't think of I don't think that there's any movie outside of Lethal Weapon that I think when I think of Shane Black that this is a classic. That's probably true. Yeah, I think you kind of nailed it because he is uh, as you said his movies are really. They're really entertaining, yeah. but really the only classic movie there is the Lethal Weapon movie. Yeah. And the rest are sort of, um, well, they're, they're, they're good fun. Yeah, yeah, but not nothing more. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I liked Iron Man 3. I like mm. Iron Man th 3 precisely for the reason that a lot of fans hate it. Mm. That they surprise everybody and then the Mandarin is... No. Is is an actor. No. Is a hammy actor. My name's Trevor. Trevor Slattery. What are you? What are you, a decoy? You're a double, right? Well, I mean, I can't study. No, absolutely not. Don't hurt the face. I'm an actor. You got a minute to live. Fill it with words. Just a roll. The Mandarin. See, it's not real. I, I thought that that was a really, really good idea to... But, but that's, a, that's sort of a perfect platform because... Comics are, I mean, superhero comics are pulpy. No. By definition, they're pulpy. So stuff like that, if you inject that kind of spike mm. into exactly the right moment, I think that works for me. No. And that was a problem I had with, with for, for one thing, it seems that Shane Black's dialogue works really well between two people. Oh. And now in the... Predator, we have this group yeah. and they're sort of trying to have those same quips go sort of intersectionally mm. within each other. And I think that they miss the mark. I think yeah. that a lot of that dialogue just doesn't, partly it doesn't work because the actors are just not attuned enough mm. into that Shane Black kind of thing. And partly it, it doesn't work because they're constantly sort of having these throwaway yeah. jokes and none of them really land. They, they, they land incredibly badly, I think, in The Predator. I had a run-in with a space engine. Oh, shit! 
<laughs> this fucking guy is crazier than the rest of us. <laughs> Figured something out. I think we're gonna die. Just pointing it out. You're right. There's sort of too much of it in a way. Because yeah. if you have a group of, let's say, like eight people, and they're all doing a variation of the same shtick, yeah. it becomes dull. Yeah. Because everybody's saying these sort of edgy, funny things all the time, and it's like, a, and nothing, nothing really sticks. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, it, yeah it's, it's boring. It's so much artifice. It just doesn't. I, I think that it works well when there's two people, because you can sort of think that these two guys have this special kind mm, of chemistry. And, yeah. And, and, and they go back and mm. forth. And then when you expand it into a group, it's just not believable anymore that they're all these kind of quirky, no. weird. You have, to have the, you have to have the sort of straight man. No. And there weren't a lot of straight Not really. I characters. mean, even the villain that I really liked is sort of like a caricature, caricature villain in yeah. a way. He's really like truly evil <laughs> in a sense. He's yeah. funny and he's sort of and he's played really well by the actor, but um, he is kind of like this Doctor Evil level evilness, like yeah. let's just kill everybody. Yeah. So it's it's it's. I think it's sort of like an edginess overload. Yeah. 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 It's and it's weird because because. Um, I, I sort of want, I, I have this feeling that I sort of want to like Shane Black mm. movies. And then nowadays they just don't land. I mean, this didn't land at all mm. for me. But even with The Nice Guys and with Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, it's sort of, I'm, I'm amused mm. by a lot of the stuff within it. But as a whole, I just feel that it just, it just misses it's not a completely satisfying yeah, movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And it's interesting also because um, Black originally wrote the screenplay for uh, Lethal Weapon 2. Mm. And the script was rejected. He, I think he had like personal problems at mm. the time or something like that. And he completed the script and in the end Martin Riggs, Riggs dies. Mm. And the studio thought this is way too dark. Mm. Obviously, they wanted to do another sequel, yeah. but they also thought that this was this was um, just not something that would land. And then they sort of thought that it's probably because Black was himself in a very dark mm. place at that time, and so on and so on. But uh, and and apparently the the script is still sort of fans are they want to read it. And it's not be, it hasn't been published anywhere. Mm. Black has it, but he hasn't wanted to publish it. There's mm. sort of all, all, only like plot outlines and details and stuff like that has have been have been leaked. Mm. Uh, but the 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 script was completely sort of reworked for for Lethal Weapon mm. two. And after that, it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't a Shane Black thing any yeah. uh, anyway. Um, I think that they they were able to in all of the sequels they were able to sort of maintain that Riggs Murtaugh dynamic quite well. Mm, that I is mean, a good point. But 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 I don't think that. So so that's not sort of exclusively something that he created, that he yeah. can do. Mm. He just created two really good characters yeah. with which further screenwriters should, could sort of play mm. with. But I, I, I'm just. Well, the bottom line for me is that I don't, I don't think that Shane Black has all the merit that a lot of people think that he has. And I mean, I, mm. I'm, it might be that I'm, I'm, I, I'm obviously in, in a minority in terms of people who like these sorts of films because when Kiss Kiss Bang Bang first mm. came out, they people said that they really liked it, mm. that it was a, it was a fresh take, and it was his first. He, he, it was the first movie he directed. Yeah. Um, so he, they thought that he, this, that he was sort of was able to translate whatever was whatever he liked to write into directing as well, mm -hmm. which is a completely different thing, and it's a com it, it's a difficult thing. The same thing happened with the Nice Guys. I think that a lot of people really liked mm. that this is Shane Black is back and yeah. and so on and so on. And with both those movies, I just I it just sort of. I wanted to like them, and I sort of like them, but 
like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't that yeah. satisfying. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like them, but um, I think you have a really valid point that they're not... I think he, he could use somebody else like a writing partner, somebody to sort of stabilize the situation. And maybe, because he is sort of incapable of um, bringing anything else to the table. He has this, this sort of a formula that works, but it, does, it, it, it works. It, 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 it makes for entertaining movies, but the problem is that the, you, with the right nudge, they could be better. Yeah. And I think people usually just don't see it because they are still entertaining movies and they're better than the the average norm of the movies that are out there. Yeah. Because they are really, they have this sort of an in, interesting, um, intelligent, witty, witty dialogue and this plot that is sort of um, surprising. But you, you do have a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's it's a shame. I think uh, I don't think that he necessarily plays well with others. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he was originally hired in the first Predator movie to rewrite mm -hmm. some of the scripts, and and he declined mm -hmm. for some reason or other. I think that he said that he because he liked the original script though, that much, he mm -hmm. didn't didn't really want to touch it, mm -hmm. um, and he was like. 20 years old mm. or something like that back then and he he just there are i think a few sort of jokes or a few things that are in the original mm. script that he worked on but that was mostly he was just there to you know be a part of the experience mm. kind of way and he agreed to be there because they wanted him to write and actually he just ended up mostly just acting in the yeah. movie um but yeah, he's a he's a weird guy. Now he's I think he's developing developing a, a script that he's been wanting to do for ages uh, on Remo Williams, the Destroyer novels. I don't know if you've ever no. seen that. They, they it's been a thing of his since like the, when he was writing Lethal mm. Weapon two. He was trying to get Remo Williams off the off the ground, and and now it's sort of in development. I think. Um, but I don't. I just don't see that this is necessarily. A, this isn't necessarily a. a well, the, I I don't know. Actually, don't know how well the Predator has done. Not well. Yeah. At all. Yeah. And I I am not surprised. I mm. I really am not surprised. And I I for one I don't want. I I don't really want to see that movie, ever again. Mm. Um, but it is. That there is, I, I feel that for me, there is something usually seriously lacking about a Shane Black movie. And I don't mind pulp. Mm. I love pulp movies. I, I love the original Predator is pure pulp. Mm. But but he's there's just something missing, and that's enough to turn me off. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, you know holding him at such a high degree that other people tend mm. to hold him. No, you're probably right. <laughs>